Live from San Francisco, California, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering DockerCon 2015. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media, with special thanks to Docker. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live for day two coverage of DockerCon. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my host Jeff Fick, GM of theCUBE. Our next guest is Scott Johnson, SVP of product here at Docker, industry veteran. Uh, welcome to theCUBE again, good to see you. Thanks John, good to be back. John, Jeff, good to see both of you. Yeah. Thanks for coming out to DockerCon. We really appreciate Thanks, you guys John. having us. Oh, we're excited Great to have you team. Here. Uh, oh. Up and down, great management team, and still small company. I mean, still small, still small. 160 people and a turtle. Hard to believe. <laughs> Where is the turtle? People want to you know. know. He should be here. You're right. He should. He's a big part of the show, but he uh, he's chilling out without us in the office. I think he's actually <laughs> glad that we're out doing the show, so he can just relax a bit. So, uh, so what an exciting time for you guys, right? One, we get to know you guys over the years. It's a great company, but it's really important Thank technology you. at this point in the history of the innovation cycle that is the tech business right now. It is one of those once in a generation architectural changes in cloud computing. It, it is, I mean, honestly, we all are fortunate to be living at this time where we can see it, right? I mean, these, these changes don't come through every year. They don't even come through every two or three years. They come through like once a decade. Like you said, once a decade, maybe once every 12, 13 years, right? When the whole stack just is completely upended, the runtime, the management stack, and everything around it, and this is that time. Yeah. This is that time, and, and we just feel incredibly fortunate that yeah. we're a company right in the middle of that and able to work well, with you, so many you users. Well, you sold your, one of your companies you were involved in to Netscape, which is back in the internet back days. In the day. yeah. Back in the day, and that was a structural change with the internet. Obviously not as big as client server and PC, but still enabled now this change, which is cloud computing. So I got to ask you, just someone who's been in the industry now leading product at Docker, you got to look at the roadmap, you're talking to customers. What is the fundamental architectural change in cloud computing that is going to make this disruption, this innovation cycle, ongoing for the next 10 plus right. years? No, it's, it's a great question and, and we're going to keep, I bet you we're going to keep coming back to this question right as the years go on because it's changing as Docker changes how we think about compute, right? But to, to try to... And software development. That, that, absolutely, the whole process, right? End to end. Yeah. So, look, I'll try to be brief, but this is a wonderful topic. But, but if we look at what the last decade, say, has been done at the infrastructure layer, thanks to Amazon and VMware, right? Yeah. That has really taught us the value of agility at the infrastructure layer. And what Docker has done is kind of really drafted off of that and taken those lessons to the application layer. And so Docker is now all about application agility on top of infrastructure agility. So, so now you have cloud computing that on a dime can spin up instances and Docker at the application layer, which on a uh, millisecond of a dime or some, some fraction of a dime, a, a cent, can spin up uh, tens of containers on top of every VM. Yeah. And you just have a very, very agile top to bottom stack now that is, as, as we're yeah. discussing, kind of revolutionizing in the way we think about computing. At Wikibon, uh, David Floyd, one of our top analysts, coined the term SLI, software-led infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Jerry mm -hmm. Chen earlier on theCUBE this morning called it uh, right. DDI, developer-driven infrastructure. Right. 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 Whatever you want to call it, it's right. software at the heart of the value proposition. That's exactly right. So and that it's, and it's apps, right? It's software and it's apps down Yes. versus infrastructure up, uh, which which historically has kind of constrained applications, mm -hmm. right? It's been like, yeah. oh, what am I deploying to, and what's over there, what you know, what storage system am I using, what network am I using, and that's had to inform how we think about the apps and how we architect yeah. them, and it's going the other that's way. That's a reversal it's, of where it was complete, before. It's Whatever the, my network down. was dictated what I could do with my that's apps. exactly right. Where well, my see. storage was, oh, well, that's the capability of that node. That node is attached to my SAN, so that node can yeah. only do DBA, blah, blah, blah it's being completely upended. So what Amazon and VMware, you brought those up, because it's a great, great lead in my next question. They taught us a few things. I'm calling this the seven year itch of Amazon since they've been out. Like, there are people have been watching them. They're just blowing it out the doors. Yeah, it's not a race company. to zero, as someone speculated. The numbers are clear, seven to $10 billion phenomenal in company. top line revenue. Yes, yes. Now they make the numbers work to break even. That's the magic of Andy Jassy they and keep Jeff investing. Bezos. Yeah, keep so they're reinvesting. So Absolutely. that flywheel. Those numbers cannot be refuted. Oracle just showed yesterday 300 million last quarter. Yep. This is on, yeah, game cloud on. Is on, game cloud on, is on right? game over. So if you aren't end-to-end -end integrated stack, hardware it, it, to that's software. Right. Well, if you're, not, if you're not looking at these technologies and trying to take advantage of them in any way possible, right? If you're not trying to learn as an enterprise how to take advantage of agile infrastructure, how to take advantage of agile applications, like you're, you're going to be left behind, right? And the beauty or of- Or out of business. Or out of, left behind leads to out of business very shortly, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, I think 
you don't have to take the whole enchilada at once, and that's what we're seeing in our own ecosystem, is that you don't have to go right to microservices overnight, but you gotta start with something simple. And we have wonderful use cases where a, a developer will bring Docker onto their laptop and get so much utility just out of redoing their environment on their laptop, that that's what lights them up, and that's what brings them in and yeah. starts sharing with their friends and their developers. So so start small, yeah. but the but the impacts, even on those small changes, can be tremendous. So I got to ask the roadmap questions. I love product conversations, as you know. Sure. So, the speed of, of change is, for you guys is pretty in incredible. It's unbelievable. And, and people want it to go faster. It's like, hey, can you pedal any faster? Well, Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as a product executive, it used to be slow. I'm not slower, hey, roadmap, next quarter we'll have these goals. How are you managing the product team, Docker, when you have a lot of pressure to solidify, decompose, share, make frictionless consumption of Docker, yeah. and then yeah. two, peer with the community? <laughs> no, that's I right. I mean, it's a challenge. It, so how do you it, what do, it, how do you prioritize? What's the focus? It is. It is. And you know what we're trying to do is find you know natural cadences for these different communities, right? For these different segments. Because you're right. While while there's a lot of pressure for innovation from the vendors or from the community, there's also, as you might expect, folks who are running mission critical, business critical applications. who are like, hey, 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 I'm not going to deploy to prod every day, every fresh every fresh change off the tip of the tree, right? And so, um, what you saw, for example, yesterday, that we now have an experimental branch, right? And that experimental branch will be updated in real time. So if you want the latest, greatest, bleeding edge, you go right to experimental, you can go, and that's a whole bunch of the community members, it's, it's some enterprises as well, um, and then there's a team that's just going to be shipping all the time. But to, the, to the branch. To the branch. To the experimental yeah, branch. Yeah, to the experimental branch, right? Every day, built, you know, nightly builds, right? Um, we also, though, will have a stable branch that will have software that you can run your business on. And then, as we announced this afternoon or this morning, we'll have this commercial solutions package that'll be supported for 12 months. So the APIs and that will be supported for 12 months. So right there, you got one, two, yeah. three. When you're three 12 years in your Red Hat. Right, well, 12 years in Red Hat, but 12 <laughs> months, 12 well, months. They the day the 10 right? year, 12 year SLA on their, on REL, right? So. Right. But for, and for, but for that level of the stack, to get that, it's too exa exactly, yeah. right? So for their business, kidding. their point in the stack, like that's yeah. entirely appropriate, yeah, yeah. right? It's yeah. like, hey, their age, it's, you know, it, you know, my applications aren't going to change, yeah, so yeah. let's run that's them what out. customers want. But microservices is changing, as we, as we saw in the last 24 hours, 48 hours, microservices is changing so quickly, no one's asking us for 10 year support agreements. 12 yeah. months to them, so they like, just oh, trying to get the production. Okay, okay, 12 months, yeah, we can work within an envelope, and then at the end of 12 months, hey, next one. Right. So, just to try to answer your question, those are three different cadences. Yeah. Just keep the shifting that value customers out. Customers, as well as internally for different teams to work against. Business model conversation is all about marginal economics of software. So, have you just randomly popped in my head the question to ask the, you as a senior product person in software changing this much? Where where is it not a race to zero? Because that's the skepticism of right there. It's a race to zero. It's commodity market. Did you ask Jerry that question? Yeah, yeah. I did. Well, I should have been paying attention. To <laughs> said. Look, I, I'm a big believer of value shifts. I mean, a and the app's going to have that value. Well, Management that, stack, whatever. That's you exactly call what it. it is, right? And um, it's, it's exactly right. And you will go back kind of the first principles of, of this change that we're in the midst of, which is software's eating the world, right? And that goes back to applications being written yeah. by developers, right? And so while developers um, still don't have necessarily huge budgets, they are creating the new architectures that the operations teams need to support. And so, in terms of creating uh, a business model, a viable business model that supports economics, is you want to make it super easy for the developers to adopt and the CI team to adopt and really have that architecture baked in the very beginning yeah. of the life cycle, and then it moves on into the operations team, into IT, and it's like, all right, we've got to support now this Docker-based, cl cloud-native, uh, microservice, whatever you want to call it, distributed application, and Docker, I need the tools for that. And so you yeah. saw our price point, $150 a month, $150 a month subscription for 10 Docker nodes. I mean, that's more than, I think I joke, most of us will pay, that's less than most of us will pay for drinks in the, in the two days here, right? Yeah. So that helps the team well, get started. That's a beer started. at AT&T uh, Park. Yeah, yeah, a bad beer. A, a bad, yeah, yeah, a bad beer at AT&T, AT right? <laughs> um, let's go there after this. Um, and so you'll see I'm a there. team land with that, yeah. very economically, right? But by the time you get to operations, they need support, not just for 10 nodes, but for 10,000 nodes. And they need complete tooling to integrate with their Puppet, with their LDAP, with their security system. And all of that, they are very willing to pay for. And so that's really how you create a sustainable business, a viable business out of, out of this. So I'm going to ask you, as you know, you guys are really doing well, a lot of integration with all touch points in the, in the ecosystem, and IBM's here, a lot of vendors are that's here, right. the big whales, 
pun intended, are yes, here. But the, big, <laughs> but the big themes coming out of DockerCom are open container standard, OCP. Yes. Um, the cross-host networking, yes, which is really huge. cool, and the Docker plugins. I would say, kind of, mean my big meat in the bone, some politics and some kumbaya, you know, free love with the with the community. But the standard speaks. This speaks to what where the status is. I want to get your thoughts on those three things. Yeah, the coalition around openness reminds me of the Linux days, a well, forcing function of absolutely. coming together. No, you, you nailed it, right? I mean, look, the market is moving too quickly and has the potential to be too big, too disruptive, for all of us to fragment, right, and, and waste time on really, really arguments that don't bring any value to the customer, don't yeah. really bring value to the innovation at the top, the higher levels of the stack. So this was a result of everyone just kind of standing back and saying, look, what's important? What's important is that we have a big, growing, exciting market. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Let innovation happen up here, not down Plenty here. Plenty of fruit in the right? trees in the, in oh the my, valley of greatness. Oh my God, absolutely. Yeah. And why are we right? squabbling over, you know. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. Let's yeah. not have premature fragmentation. Yeah. Um, and so let's just squash that. So that's what the OCP, OCF is all yeah. about. The, the networking piece, um, I, By I the think, way, it happened in a very short time frame, which is also an indicator it did. of the cohesiveness of the community. Alignment, everyone recognizing the yeah. right thing to do, and yeah. everyone coming together. And again, I'll, I'll give a shout out to CoreOS and Alex Polvey for just really aligning with us very, very quickly and understanding all of us together, like understanding like this is the important thing for the users, for the other vendors in the ecosystem, as well as for obviously the participants. So, yeah, shout out to, to him. Good job. House off to him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, no, number two, networking. Here's here's the headline. We, we, we're we doing for networking yesterday what Docker did for compute two years ago. F f full stop. I mean, it's going to be as disruptive as what compu w the way we've You see it being very compute. simple and elegant for someone to configure networks. Well, and the portability, the portability again, yeah. right? Because okay. think about doing networks in the bad old days, you know, two or three years ago, right? <laughs> like, you built it once, oh, it moved to a different set yeah. of infrastructure, different stacks. Again, going back to the previous yeah. argument of like, infrastructure up or app down, Right? And it used to be, oh, we just moved to a different network stack and oh, what's who's our provider and what's their standards. Like that's that's bottoms up, that's infrastructure uptype informing of the application architecture. That's gone. That's yeah, gone with yeah. yesterday's announcement. Like it's now app down network definition and mi mind blowing, right? The portability of networks. What is the big enabler for that? Because this is a this is a huge concept. It's right. a huge we'll, get concept. To, we'll get to the plugins in a especially, second. But. Especially, sorry to interrupt John, but especially if like microservices is about network containers, right? Yeah, so it used, to, get the, it, used to, it used to be <laughs> networking <laughs> tens of VMs. Okay, great. Now we're networking hundreds of containers, thousands of containers, tens thousands. of thousands yeah. of containers. And virtualization, wow. un unlimited potential wow. scalability. How important is the network in that model? So important. Yeah. So to disrupt it in the way we disrupted it, at DockerCon, like I, I think we'll look back and and see this as a but this makes this moment. is profound because it makes the network more it makes the apps more compatible with the rigidness of networks, but yet there's some flexibility there. But if you try to bring rigidness up to the apps, yeah, we've seen policy anti, anti based, right? Yeah, so, so the policy right. based is very limited. That's right. I'd much rather push policy down to that, that's a, exactly an unlimited right. to a. What does my app have to do? What are security requirements? Where is it allowed to run versus not yeah. allowed to run? Great, and that all yeah. goes with not just the containers anymore, it goes with the containers and the network fabric. Right, it's, it's, it, it is Okay, it is orchestration. Yes. Um, orchestration's a big deal. Huge. Who manages all this? Is Docker going to manage it? You have your own management service? There's people out there saying, hey, I'll run some Kubernetes over here, I got CoreOS, yeah, I got Mesos. Yeah. And well, this is, you know? going back to the, your first question, like this is where so much innovation is going on right now at this layer in the stack, right? It's the top layer of the stack right now. And um, honestly, our, our play is similar to what you've seen at every layer all along, which is um, batteries included, but swappable. Meaning, like, we will provide an out of box experience that just will get that to Describe what the battery is included means. I know sure. the metaphor yeah. for the folks No, who watch sure. It. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So, so, it means we'll include an implementation that works well for the developer on their desktop out of the box. So, they don't have to go and piece stuff together. Yeah. So, what's an example? batteries, so to speak. That's right. Yeah. So, so what's, yeah. what's an example of that? So, Swarm, right? Swarm has built in a little cluster manager that works great out of the box for a developer, wants to manage a couple of nodes and containers across those nodes. Outstanding but they want to then move that application into the data center. Maybe Ops has decided on Mesosphere, or maybe they decided on Kubernetes, or maybe, like yesterday's announcement, maybe they decided on Amazon ECS for their backend cluster manager. Great. They, the developer can still use the Swarm front end API, again, portability, yeah, yeah. right, to launch their multi-container distributed app. You guys want again. consumption and frictionless acceptance and of this app architecture, of, of this app architecture, yeah. and yeah. we don't want to have it um, slow down as a result of infrastructure battles. Great, so we'll provide an adapter, we'll provide a plugin for those different yeah. infrastructures. So 
it's a complicated, it's a long-winded answer, a complicated answer to your question, but the point is like Docker doesn't want to control orchestration, Docker wants to provide a great portable, yeah. portable application definition that can work with all these and tools. And by the way, that decision of who owns it or who participates the most economically is still downstream, it's still up for it grabs. Is. It it's is. not necessarily set in stone it at is. this point. And, and, and there's look, no foreclosure right now in the architecture that you see? There, there's it's not. It's not a jump ball? There's not, there is. And, and you see, uh, depending on use case, a whole bunch of different vectors, which again, big pie, right? Big pie for all, all to share. You see cloud-based ACS, Amazon EC2 ECS, clearly a cloud-based solution. Mesosphere's trying to straddle both. Kubernetes, optimizing for Google's workloads. So there's still a lot of different use cases, a lot of different customer uh, input that's, that's informing this, this innovation. So I think, I think there's- yeah, It's so still a jump ball there, right there's, now. There's a lot, jump ball, a lot of innings left in the game. All right, so I want to ask you, uh, I know Jeff's going to get a word in. I got to ask you a question. Sorry, Jeff, keep rolling. I, I got, I got He's it. rolling. Oh, no, yeah. this is, we have the, the big, big brain here, experience, and I don't know about that. Well, you've you got a lot of experience. Me? And you have the curl shirt. Jerry, Jerry's behind you me, right? You get the curl, cool, <laughs> Jerry Chen, he's, he's just a figurehead, he's, right. he's an investor. <laughs> he's the bank. We had Jerry. Um, but Jerry is super smart, we love Jerry. Um, now, if <laughs> I was going to ask, no, I was going to ask. Dial it, with all the data, Amazon, Oracle, and others, it's clear there's a money-making opportunity. So I want you to just share with the audience your perspective and vision it's not so much a Docker-centric question, but more of your, your thinking of yourself as a, as a uh, experienced consultant to all the, the viewers. Where's the opportunity to make money? If the assumption, if you, if you believe that there's a plenty of beachhead for everyone to yeah, play, yeah, yeah, there is. And why there fight is. over, right. you know, the apple trees or fruit trees, whatever you want to call it? Right. What? How do you explain that to someone who's young and in sure. the industry? Yeah, no, fair, totally mm -hmm. fair. You uh, know, it, about this concept that yeah. if we all win, yeah, the, the out in the valley, it's fruit fruitful grounds. Absolutely. Uh, share your thoughts and vision Absolutely. on that. And, and look, there's been a lot of uh, platforms, a lot of very smart platform architects that have come before us all. And I think you can learn from history a lot, right? And um, honestly, the x86 or the Wintel platform is one of the really good examples here where I'll simplify it to two, two different areas to play, right? One is extending the platform. Right, so I just mentioned batteries include a bit swappable. The but swappable is a way to extend the platform. And we announced a bunch of extension points here today. We've announced a number over the last 12 months. All of those are places to play. If you're an infrastructure provider, if you have a special tool that does an implementation that is differentiating and valuable for your customers, you can absolutely make a good business out of that. So extension, extending the platform is one. Number two is building vertical solutions on the platform. Full stop, and we saw this again yeah. in the Wintel days in spades, right? It's like Docker is a phenomenal unifying platform across the internet. I mean, our, yeah. our Salman's big vision yesterday, right? Make yeah. the internet programmable. Yeah. We are the unifying platform across the internet. That is a horizontal platform. There is, could be verticals for healthcare, financial services, banking, manufacturing, yada, 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 how yada. How is this different from right? the, all, all those? How is this different from the old platform wars where it was win, one guy wins and everyone loses. The Microsofts, the early days of Oracle. You know, we own it, we own the platform. Um, monopolistic, some say, and this is Microsoft was ruled against it, but that's the old model. But open source is the new dimension. That's right. Thoughts on that? That's right. You, you see it very viable that there could be a unifying open platform. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and more and wealth and for the participants and, and the platform owner. That's exactly right. Well, and, and the, the, use, the OCP from yesterday is an example of that, right? So it's not the old platform days, to your point, where it's like, yeah. it, you know, competitive it's a silo, advantage, lock it's a silo, in. lock it down, right? And you yeah. got to get through us, you got to get through our you know, our tax toll booth to make it work. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. the OCP is a great example, like, nope, you know, we're not going to try to create taxing toll booths that are going to slow down the industry and exact exorbitant tolls from participants. And it, quite the opposite, if you make it open, if you make it standardized, then it's actually a bigger pie for more people to kind of play in and eat from. So the old expression, I only count how much money I make, not the other guy's money, yeah. is your philosophy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You guys will exactly. make a good business Phenomenal Enabling business. people to harvest. And participants will also make a phenomenal business on this. Yeah. And I think what's different about this, open source changed the game. Absolutely. If there was no open source, it would be the lock-in. You know, like it, was land the old, it was the only model, that's yeah. right. And now open yeah. source. The landowner, the building owner, and the. Completely <laughs> blows it open, right? Yeah. And, and, and no one has to be seen as like, am I inside the silo or outside the silo, right? Yeah. Because there's no silo, thanks to open source. Yeah. All right, and so for you guys, value for future monetization is what? Unlimited. <laughs> Management software so on top of the stacks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what you saw, what yeah. you saw uh, this morning is, is really along the ways of the management software, right? So it's the runtime is open source, continues to be open source, will be open source. The 
the users are asking for tooling to help manage these distributed applications, and we talked about two tools this morning. We talked about the Docker Trusted Registry, which helps manage the images that are being stored and shared amongst team members across the lifecycle, and then we did a sneak peek of Project Orca, which is management tooling for actually deploying and managing the distributed apps once they've been deployed to a data center, deployed to a cloud, deployed across clouds, and so um, we think the platform openness allows lots of developers to build great applications, and it gives us an opportunity to just, even a fraction, just provide management tools just to a fraction of that market, and we're going to have a phenomenal business. All right, Scott, we're getting the uh, the time limit here. Final point, share with the audience who aren't here. Some of the conversations, the vibe, top, top stories from your perspective here in San Francisco, here at DockerCon. Yeah, you know, it, it's one of those conferences, and we've all been around a lot of conferences. It's one of those conferences where you, you walk in and you just feel the excitement, right? You feel the excitement in the hallway track, I mean, the hallway track, uh, talking to vendors, talking to each other. You go into the track sessions and you're hearing, you're hearing about name brand Fortune 500s in production with the product and they are on fire and you can tell that these are the, these are the guys that are early adopters inside of GE and inside of Cap One and, and programs like that and, and enterprises like that. And they, they're they just, the Navy SEALs, they're the elite they, forces. And they have a vibe about them that is yeah. super positive and can do and you see the participants jumping up and asking questions, how do you do this, how do you do that? Not just technology, process, culture, people, like the whole stack. And so uh, you just look at that energy and, and I got to say like having been to a lot of tech conferences, you don't see that level at all layers in the stack, at all conferences. And so final, final question is, inside Docker, what's the culture like? What's the, it feels what's a lot like this, it's like we can do it. I mean, Project Orca was not a tops down decision, right? That was an engineer who saw a need, went off, hacked on his weekends. I, sh I, sh I should have called this out in the keynote. Evan has a full-time day job. His full-time day job is working on Docker Machine, which as you know, is our host provisioner solution. He goes home at night, goes home on the weekend, hacks away, and he came up with yeah. Orca on his own because of that passion, because yeah. of the vision of like, I can see our users needing a tool like yeah. this to deploy distributed apps. We got to so, get them in the cube. That's a tech athlete right there. That's working overtime. That's working overtime. That's a Okay, vision. Scott Shotson, SVP of product here inside the cube, sharing all the data we can at DockerCon. This is the cube. We'll be right back with more after this short break.